Good morning. God is so good, no, in our lives. And if you think about it, we have three Sundays, including today, left before we will celebrate together with the rest of the world, no, uh, Jesus coming to earth. And it's such a precious moment for all of us because this would be great for families that we could teach our kids, no, na Jesus came, really, and that's the reason why we have the hope in us. So, I'd like you to open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and in the three weeks that we have, or the two Sundays left before we celebrate December 24 on a Sunday, I want us to get ready no, with every message that leading up to it regarding Christmas, regarding this gift that God has given us, the wonderful gift of His Son. So Hebrews 12, 25 to 29 begins with this. See to it that you do not refuse Him, oh, and that's capital H, Him, meaning the Lord, who is speaking. For if those did not escape when they refused Him, small letter H, Him, meaning these are the messengers of God in the past. So whether they be prophet, pastor, or someone that was a, a man of faith or a woman of faith carrying the word of God, if those listening to these messengers, to these prophets, did not listen to the word spoken to them, and what was about the word? There were warnings in them no? while they were on earth. Much less will we escape who turn away from Him who now warns us from heaven. In other words, there's a greater degree now because these are not just human pastors or prophets. This is now God, the Son of God, Jesus the Lord Himself who's come warning us from heaven, and therefore, it will be a terrible fate if we refuse capital letter H now instead of the small letter H. Heavier, weightier consequence. And 26 says, And his voice shook the earth then, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This expression, yet once more, denotes, has the meaning of the removing of things which can be shaken, as of created things, so that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we offer to God an acceptable service with reverence and awe. Let's take this moment to ask the Lord's help to listen to His Word. Dear Lord, thank You so much that indeed You give us meaning, You give us life. The reason why we celebrate this season every time and for the rest of our lives every day and leading until eternity, Lord, is because by your gracious mercy, you have given us your one and only Son, that whomsoever will believe in him shall live. This precious gift we have received, O Lord, we celebrate Christmas, not because of the things that we have, but because of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us, anchor us, guide us, that not only is this a thing that we do every now and then, but this would be our everyday reality of our life, a real relationship with you, given only by your grace through faith in Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to title this message, wait, there's, no, no, Hebrews 20, 29 verse, is that our God is a, for our God is a consuming fire. Now, I want to title this message, The Gift of the Unshakable Kingdom. And I want to talk about 
in relation to this gift of the unshakable kingdom we have received, the recent earthquakes. You see, I'm sure that our worlds have been shaken once more and several times already. In fact, earlier this morning, this did not, this, this did not work. <laughs> the right side, uh, Rainford approached me uh, before the service began because this side of the uh, speaker didn't work because, because of the earthquake, uh, the, the steel um, rope thing broke and it also affected our wire and you know, uh, praise God, it's now working. They, they got it fixed. But that's the thing. Um, we have heard of the news no, in, in, that happened in very nearby, Jensan, Sarangani, Davao, and here in Cagayan de Oro, we've had several aftershocks already. Now, how do we relate to these earth-shattering things? No? Na, na, why are these things happening? What is God doing? Why, why is He allowing all these things? And we know we hear people died so much damages. Why, why are these things happening? And so some of us might have this question. Maybe some of us needs to be reminded of this wonderful thing, that God, who He is, and what He's given us, the gift of the unshakable kingdom. Now, notice that in verse 26, the word of the Lord said, and God's voice shook the earth then. Meaning, in the past. The earthquake that we had in Sarangani, though it is terrible, it cost the life of many, until, uh, you know, and how many millions of damages that it cost, and the lasting lingering effect of it should compel our hearts to be compassionate no, to the needy, to those that are, have been affected, and that is so good. But that's not going to be the last. How many times have the earth shook? Have you asked that question? How, if this is not the first time that, that an earthquake happened in the Philippines, how many earthquakes have we had in the past? If you remember, Bohol, the Bohol earthquake, how many people died there and how strong it was. It was stronger than what we had a few weeks ago. The, the earthquake in Bohol, because of the, the structure there, it caused the death of 175 people, inquirer would report. But that's not the only earthquake we had. There was also a far worse earthquake that happened. If you could remember way back in the 90s, 1990, there was an earthquake that happened in Baguio. And this was stronger. And a lot more people died here. In fact, uh, an article said that 3,000 people were injured, 2,400 people lost their lives. And this was the worst earthquake since the Moro Gulf no? in the 1976. I don't know how many of us experienced the earthquake, but after the first service, I sat with someone and talked with him who actually felt the Moro Gulf uh, earthquake here in Cagayan de Oro. Uh, he was that old. No? And, and he said that he could really see the, the earth shaking like this and then like that and then like, like this. <laughs> and then he would see the poles and the uh, electric wires snapping. And then um, that was a, ma a stronger magnitude then. So when God's saying that with his voice, the earth has shook. If you think about it, since the 1970s, over 10,000 earthquakes have happened in the Philippines. 10,000. And if you record the seven deadliest, there, there, there was the Moro Gulf, the magnitude of eight, and then the Luzon earthquake, that's in Baguio, 7.7. .7 where thousands of people also died. And therefore, what we have felt a few weeks ago was not even the strongest that we have experienced locally as a nation in the Philippines. But we can imagine the devastation. Now, do you know what was the worst earthquake ever in the world? 
It's not a magnitude of eight. What we had in the Philippines was only eight. It was 9.5. And it happened in the 1960s. It's called the Great Chilean Earthquake, where in a matter of just minutes, every many cities collapsed. Reportedly, 6,000 people died, and it has caused even neighboring uh, nations to encounter the aftershocks with the tsunamis that the earthquake caused, that was caused in Chile. So Japan uh, experienced tsunamis, Hawaii experienced tsunamis because of this earthquake, 9.5. In history of humankind, this is the strongest earthquake we have ever recorded. That puts us in perspective, no? When the word, when God speaks, His word alone makes the earth shake. Now, as Christians, how do we have, how do we develop a, an understanding, a faith and trust in God who causes earthquakes? How can we prepare in life and live life? How can we teach our kids to have faith in a God that's not small, but it's so big, so mighty, that His voice alone will cause the strongest devastating force that mankind knows, and one of that is earthquake. Now, it's, it might interest you to know that the Word of God, the Bible, never attributes earthquakes to Satan. It's all God. Earthquakes, think about it. So many devastation, so many lives killed, so much damage. None of it is attributed to Satan, who is evil, who is sinful, right? Now, it's all attributed to God, the calamities. I want to direct you to several texts, and this might make you know your God more, to make you have this fear of Him, this holy reverential fear. He's not a small, tiny God. He's big. Second Samuel 22, 8, Then the earth shook and quaked, and the fountains of heaven were trembling and were shaken. Why? Because God was angry. What makes God angry? Sin and sinful men, right? It's sin and those that commit, who commit it, whether they are man, woman, or child. And God is angry, and we see here earthquakes. In Isaiah 13, 13, God said through, spoke to His prophet Isaiah, Therefore I will make the heavens tremble, and the earth will be shaken from its place. You see it again. What would be the cause? Because of the, the, the fury of the Lord of hosts in the day of His burning anger. So it is attributed. Many earthquakes happen because there is a God who is holy and just and He looks at sin and sinful humankind and there's fury in Him. There's wrath in Him. And he will make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake from its place. Isaiah 29 6 From the Lord of hosts, you will be punished with thunder. Storms are there, earthquakes, loud noise, whirlwind, tempest, and flame of consuming fire. You could include volcano eruptions there, right? Now, That doesn't sound like a very tame God, right? That sounds like a mighty Lord of hosts in the heavens, not constrained by anything, sovereign ruler of all, always in control, all the power in Him. And what does He do to sinners? Earthquakes, calamities come because of the fury and the wrath of the thrice holy God. Psalm 60, verse 1 and 2, 
Oh God, you have rejected us, said the psalmist. You have broken us. You have, give, you have been angry. Oh, restore us. And how can the psalmist say? Because there was an earthquake. The psalmist probably sees all the devastations and he says, Lord, you have made the land quake. You have split it open. Oh Lord, heal us, restore us. Because right now, everything is tottering, right? Everything's in shambles. Nahum, the prophet would say, mountains quake because of God. Hills dissolve. Indeed, the earth is upheaved by His presence. The world and all its inhabitants in it. You should not be teaching and believing in a small God, a tame God. If you're thinking about that, you know, we celebrate Christmas. Don't celebrate Christmas as if, it's, as if, if, as if it is all just good, feeling good, right? As if everything is just, that happens is just good. You know why Christmas happened? Because of sin and God's wrath is upon humankind. So what does God do? He sends His only Son, His precious Son, knowing what these sinners will do to His Son. They will insult Him. They will reject Him. They will, they will beat Him. They will torture Him. And they will whip Him. And they will crucify Him to death. Oh, my dear friends, not everything happened when Jesus came into the world, was all good and feel good. How many babies died because of evil, sinful King Herod, who was so jealous about his throne, was so, so insecure that he would give out a rule, every baby boy under two years old shall be put to the sword. Kill him in order that I can eliminate a threat that, I, that somebody calls, my visitor has called king. I want to be king forever said the fool Herod, and therefore created a decree that killed so many. And you know the Scripture says, Jerusalem wailed and wept that night and for many nights. If you think about it, earthquakes, and other calamities are happening, will happen, has happened, are happening, and will still happen. And our Jesus, by His words Himself, if you go quickly to Matthew 24, you see that Jesus is saying, you will hear wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Why is He saying, don't panic? Because these things must take place. It's very interesting because if we're, we have the idea that God is all about sparing us from harm and danger, keeping us from pain and suffering, you know, God doesn't want you hurt. God doesn't want you to be uh, uh, even a drop of a scratch on you. And you might live life disillusioned why are there so much pain and suffering around me and in my life? Where are you, God? No, 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 my dear friends. You're speaking out of ignorance. God has already revealed who He is and what He wants for His people. You will hear these things. Wars, threats of wars, but I don't, I don't want you to panic. I don't want you to think as if there, there's nothing we can do, and, and, right? You, have you seen someone panic? That's someone that's lost his mind with sheer fright. Someone who doesn't have anything that can see that's positive or good, and therefore he's just in shambles, frozen, or maybe even running around just aimlessly doing, right, whatever. How does Jesus prepare you and I and all believers? These things must take place. I believe we can learn from that in life and how we should live life and how we should be parenting. I don't think we should be parenting as if there will be no danger that will, our child will face. I don't think we should live life as if God will not let me go through any pain or uh, no. What we should do is get ready when these things happen. You better get ready when the earthquake happens. 
When it's not just the news that we will hear it's in Jensan, you better get ready that it will happen here. You better get ready that it's not your, the news already that you hear a friend's house fell in a faraway place. You better get ready that it's going to be your house. Right? Because these things, Jesus said, must take place. And that event itself, second insurance, he says, the end won't follow immediately. These things must happen, and it's not the end. It means there's still hope because that's not the end of days still. We might think so, but it's not. Jesus says in verse 7 of Matthew 24, nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines. There will be earthquakes. There will be these things that will happen in many parts of the world. And we, true enough, 10,000, over 10,000 earthquakes have already happened in our part of the world. And Jesus says, but this, all this is only the first of the birth pain with more to come. I love how Jesus would now relate this. You know what a birth pain is? Who experiences birth pains? By the grace of God, I am thankful it is not the man. <laughs> no? Salamat, Lord. Uh, but the woman, okay? My mommy and my wife and every woman here, if you're a, a wife, no? And the God gives us the gift of children, then we will experience this, birth pain. What happens in birth pain? It's not all goody-goody feeling, right? It's real pain, real suffering. It's pain that would freeze a woman in its place. Ah, it hurts, right? Sakit. And what's going to happen is the closer you are to your full term, the more frequent it will happen and the worse the pains get. So what is Jesus saying? It's a warning, but it is not a warning that is void of hope. It is a warning, but filled with hope, just like a birth pain, just like a mother and, by extension, the father-to-be will have the hope. What is our hope? That even through this pain, there will come the full season of time that when I hold the baby in my arms, everything that I have felt, all the pain and suffering for the past nine months will all be worth it. The joy and the gladness and the love that I would have makes me look at all that pain during the birth pains. It was necessary and it was worth it because of this joy, this life that I am now holding. So you see, Jesus relates that to calamities, to, earth, to earthquakes, earthquakes that has killed the countless people and damaged countless lives, earthquakes that make us realize we're so tiny and God is so big. It's yet, it's a hope-filled picture and warning. Be ready. Be ready. Have your faith in God that you would have and look at suffering and pain in your life. These things must happen. That you will still have the faith and say, God, I'm willing to go through this pain, this suffering, because I'm looking at you. I'm looking at what you have in store for me in the future. This all will be worth it. Even if there are still more to come. Pain is a great teacher that the Lord uses. Don't teach your children to avoid pain, but to trust in God despite the pain. Don't panic, right? Don't panic. These things must happen. Trust God. Now, second, 
is that the coming of the birth pains is leading to something. What? This promise. If the small earthquakes, according to God, is not the main earthquake, there will come an earthquake. What we're feeling right now, the devastation of these earthquakes in the past, will not be will be nothing in comparison to the great and final earthquake that will come that will end the world. These devastations, they point, God points to us. God speaks to disaster and says, be ready. Be ready. I have appointed a time that what you're experiencing right now will be nothing in comparison to the, the arriving wrath of judgment. There will come an earthquake, God said, that will end everything that we know of life and in this world. Hebrews 12, back, back to our text, He has promised this. God has promised. Yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This is the end. This will be the end. Nothing will be left after this, but it's still hope. It's still a hope-filled warning, right? Be ready for this. It's not yet. You're still alive, you and I. God has not ended the world yet. That means... He's not done with you yet. You can still listen to Him now. Revelation 6, 12 will put it this way, this great day of this great earthquake. I looked, John said, of this vision, and Jesus Christ, the Lamb that was slain, broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. So the Bible declare, uh, describes this as the great earthquake. And it's so great that the sun would become black like a sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon will become red as blood. My dear friends, the worst earthquake we have recorded in human history is 9.5. The great earthquake that is to come, nobody will be prepared for it. Nobody has seen this strong or have lived through this strong of an earthquake. It has, hap it has not happened yet. In that hour, there was a great earthquake, and a tenth of the city fell. 7,000 people were killed in the earthquake, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. Imagine calamities give glory to God. God is that big. God is that strong. Praise God. One of the things that we should be ready for is to give God glory in all things. That's why we were made. Give God glory. The way we drink, the way we, what we eat, give God, give glory to God. Thank you, Lord, for giving me food. Thank you, Lord. You are my provider. You gave me this, even this water to drink. And you know what we should say as people of faith? Prepare your heart, O oh, visitor of this world passing through. Prepare to give glory to God when disasters strike. Oh God, you have shook. Philippines, you have shaken Jensan. You are so mighty. Because there's other group of people, as Revelation says, despite them seeing Jesus Christ coming from the heavens, they will, not, they will still refuse to give glory to God. They are that hardened. So my dear friends, while you are still able to listen now, do not harden your heart. Hear the word of Him who is speaking from heaven. Listen and believe. Revelation 16, 18, Then the thunder crashed and rolled, and lightning flashed, and a great earthquake struck, and it was the worst. It is the worst since people were placed on the earth. My dear friends, no great engineering work 
whether in the fu even in the future. No technology can ever prepare for this. This great earthquake will strike and it will devastate everything and everyone. That is the great earthquake that will come. Now, what will be the purpose of this great earthquake? What will be my hope, Lord? <laughs> Give me something to cling on, right? That's terrifying. You should fear the Lord, but you should also have the faith and trust. You see, he says in 27, this expression yet once more has the meaning that the earthquake, the God, why will God shake the earth in the little earthquakes and in this great earthquake that will come? If we see the pictures and videos of earthquakes, what do you see happen? Buildings shake, right? Things crumbling down. Things that, we, that cost millions or we think would never fall down, falls down during earthquakes. So God says, my purpose that I would now have decided that my judgment, my wrath would be in the form of earthquake that will end the world is because of the removing of those things which can be shaken. And what are those things that can be shaken? Created things. What are the created things? You can also include who are the created things. It's me and you. We're created beings. What we have right now are created things. The earthquake will remove everything that can be shaken as of created things. Nothing of creation will be left standing that's his purpose why have you ever noticed that when there's great calamity it teaches us to prioritize things it teaches us that you know god is so good and great what happens our confidence for number one is shaken our security is shaken we realize that life is so fragile Right? You realize that that condominium, that strong tower, that mall that with those so thick pillars, they don't provide any protection. Do you realize that when we are trained in how we can survive, or what well, they don't even say, they say, better improve your odds for better survival, right? They don't guarantee that you live through it. But they train us to hide under something, a desk, a, a, an arch, right? And we realize even those things are very limited in the protection they provide. What are that? That's the removing of things that can be shaken. What you have been trusting on, what you have been leaning on, what you think was your security. Do you realize that of all created things, your life and your family, when this thing happened, none of us will be left. You realize that? But how many of us have made a whole world our family? We would say, some would say, you are my life. You give me meaning. Without you, I am lost. Do you know where we're, who we're saying it to? A created being. And God said, I will shake everything that will be shaken so that you will see none of it is actually last. Who are we supposed to say that? To God. God, you are my life. You give me life, you give me meaning, you give me purpose. Without you, I am lost. Without you, I am not secure. But see how the heart of man makes idols out of created things. My own family. Without you, I'm nothing. My empire. 
said the rich man, this thing that I have built with my own two hands and with my mind, my abilities, these are what I derive from secu uh, security from, meaning and purpose from. That would be a foolish way to live, wouldn't it be? If you hear the words, the warning of the Lord, Christmas has happened. Jesus has come so that those who will trust in Him will live through this. Because that's not the end, right? He says, so that these things will, will have to be shaken. God will have to shake so that what will remain are the things that cannot be shaken. And what cannot be shaken? It's the kingdom that we would have received in verse 28, right? The kingdom that we have received from faith, by faith in Jesus Christ. Verse 28, since we are receiving a kingdom that is unshakable, notice that the kingdom has been received already by the believer. We can forget, we can forget, no? But this might remind you, Christmas, don't look at your stuff as the reason why you're celebrating the season. Don't look at your family as the reason why you're celebrating the season. Oh, how, how good it is for my family to come back. We're complete, right? We might be celebrating Christmas because family. It's all about just the family. No, my dear friends, celebrate because what you have in Jesus Christ as a believer is that you have received the kingdom that cannot be shaken. Do you realize that when we could wake up tomorrow, everything could be gone? Don't rely on created things. Don't put your meaning, your whole being on created things. Look to the Creator. Look to your Savior, your Lord. Because you have received the kingdom that cannot be shaken, says verse 28. You see, the earthquakes and disaster, God speaks. Your life is fragile. Don't think you have control that what, how many years you have left. Secondly, what you think is how you can protect yourself, insurance, building all these safety things, a safe room or everything, they are of limited protection. Third, all of us will die. All of us will die. No exemption. Fourth, this is the consequence of sin. We're living in a sin-cursed world. Because of sin, God has cursed the world. A judgment will come because of sin. And only those that will live are those that have received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Put their whole trust in Him. So this is a hope-filled warning. God will use calamities and earthquakes so that people can come to Him and repent. But it is not a forever time. It is a limited time. Listen now while you still can. So how should we respond? should respond in the way God tells us. Hebrews 12, 28 says, Therefore, since we received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude. It's the beginning. It's part. I don't say the beginning. I say it's part. Really, if you've understood the precious gift that you have received in Christmas, there will be gratitude. Now, have you ever seen someone or talked to someone 
who just barely made it out alive after a fire, an accident, an earthquake, or maybe survived the war, everything, right? He just barely escaped from that danger. I, I had a friend uh, who lives in a condo and a few weeks ago, a few days ago, I saw him. It was, I think, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock. I don't know. I'm not sure. My memory fails me, but it was in the morning time. He was wearing nothing but just a white t-shirt and, you know, the pajama shorts. And, he, you know, he was outside, right? And he was taking a picture of him and his wife. And he was, I, I, I forgot the word, but he was, in, in the sense that he was grateful. He was thankful. You know how many things he left behind <laughs> on that condo? Probably a lot, right? Now, I don't know how much, but before the disaster happened, one could imagine, I can't survive with all, uh, without all these things. My sofa, my bed, my ref, my cooking stove, right? My favorite babies, right? These things, my, my computer, my laptop, my iPad. I can't imagine living life without these things. But after a disaster, after you just barely escape from it, what happens? You run, oh, right now. I'm so grateful, Lord, that I'm alive. <laughs> Right, right. You, you, you're, you're just grateful because you just realize none of that mattered. What mattered is that I'm alive. And many of us are are, are caught up with worry. Oh, I'm gonna lose this stuff. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose that person. Oh, I'm gonna lose. And then we forget. What happens? We start to grumble. We lose. Our, our spirits are leaking faith in God and we lose gra gratefulness. We begin to become blind to the goodness of God that we have even when all that's left is just this. I have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That's bare minimum there, guys. That's it. If the Lord would will it and He would remove everything from you, would you be able to say, God, you have given and you have taken. I will bless your name still. I'm grateful because you gave me that time to be with them. I'm grateful, right? Because of the life you've given me and of the son that you have given me, I'm grateful still. Worship flows. It has to have gratefulness. You could struggle, and that would be part of your faith, but you could say, Lord, Everything around me is shook and shaken, but I am still grateful since I have received something that cannot be shaken and taken away from me. Your son, Jesus Christ, your promise, this life that I have is yours, right? That's response number one. This Christmas, as you celebrate, whether you have plenty or you have lack, be grateful to the Lord. He will shake everything and take everything at one point. Be grateful for what you have now and what you have in Jesus Christ. Secondly, offer to God acceptable worship. I mean, it's not just grateful and then end there. Grateful said God, come to me with grateful hearts and come to me and offer acceptable worship. Don't, come, don't try to come to me with grateful hearts and offer me unacceptable worship. I'm not going to accept them. Do you realize when God says there's acceptable worship, there's also unacceptable worship? Who rejects it? Who gets to say? Not you and me. I have friends, good intentioned friends, they say, when I tell them, this is how God said to, to worship Him. And they say, well, I don't, it's okay because this is me giving Him honor. Me, this is me giving Him respect. 
But I would tell them, but God said in His Word, you're not supposed to do that. That's, not, that's against His Word. And they would say, it doesn't matter. This is me. I'm just trying to honor Him anyway. You have to realize that our God is a consuming fire. Do you know that text, that, that phrase I mean, a consuming fire, who our God is? It's used against idolatry. When God revealed that He is a God of consuming fire, He's talking about idolatry, against idolatry. I'm going to consume everything. My wrath, I'm not going to accept them. They're, they're going to get burned, right? Our God is a consuming fire, meaning fear Him. Don't just go to Him and, try and think like He's nothing. He's just a weak little God that will take your sacrifice, your offering to Him, whatever it is, because He needs it. He's a needy God. No, He's a self-sufficient God. He doesn't need our worship. We do. We need to worship Him in order to live. We need to have faith in Him. He will only accept worship in this way, in spirit and in truth. Faith, love, obedience, trusting Him included. Let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and the right fear. Oh. That would be our response. To close with that, I want to ask you several things. I want you to meditate on these things. Because our God He's not a tame God. He's a God that is a consuming fire. His word shakes the earth. He has given us a warning, but it's a warning that is filled with hope. Hope only given to those that would listen to Him. So my dear friend, as you're listening now, God has spoken through His word. Be careful to reject Him. Don't neglect to the listening and trusting and faith to what He's speaking to you right now. Are you still worshiping shakable creation? Is, does your whole world revolve around your family? Have you made idols out of people, family, friends? loved ones, and out of things? Repent from that. Change your mind about that. Change the way you feel about that. And put your true love and worship to God. Is your heart loving things or is your heart loving God as your treasure? Is God enough for you? Is God your security? Or have you found security in your retirement plan, in your pension plan, in your insurance, in, in your business, in your home, your house? Have you worshipped a creation, a created thing, rather than the Creator? This Christmas is great. God has spoken to us through the earthquake. He's given us a warning. More will come. They must happen. Be ready. Be a people of God who's just passing through this world life. Even your children, even your possession, learn to, lose, turn, learn to hold them loosely in your hand. Humble yourself and recognize that you won't make it in life 
you won't make it through the great judgment day without the Lord Jesus Christ, without Him saving you. Humble yourself like a little child and know that when God says we will have to go through great tribulation before we enter the kingdom of God, take heart. He has conquered everything. No, nothing will separate us from the love of God. I don't want you to be hopeless, panicky, anxious people of God. He has already given us more than enough to anchor us that though we might feel fear, we will not panic. Though we might be tempted to lose ground and faith, we will hold on because you know Him and you trust Him. Not just then, not just later, but you're trusting Him now. Be grateful because He has sent Jesus Christ who offers you forgiveness and the hope of eternal life. He's given you a firm kingdom that cannot be shaken. Be grateful and worship Him with reverential awe and fear because He, though holy is He, and sinner are you and me, we have received His grace, the unshakable kingdom. And is now, and you should, make Him your portion forever, now and forever and ever. You are rich with all heavenly blessings. Praise be to His name.